in this video, we are going to continue with the app that we've been building. Um, so, so far, we, as a quick summary, we have what you can see over here. Uh, we have this AI Q&A, it's just a, you know, the very basics of Streamlit. And we have this uh, search bar that we've, or text input that we've built uh, with Streamlit over here, okay? And then we put together sort of the back end of our app. So that is initializing a connection to our vector database. Um, we also created all of our context vectors and put those in there. And also uh, initializing our retriever model, which takes care of encoding the query here. And then Pinecone over here takes care of finding the most relevant uh, context vectors based on that query vector. And then we had a look at how we can uh, iterate through all the contexts that we return from Pinecone and then display them. Now, at the moment, it's, it's very ugly. And at the same time, uh, another, thing, another really uh, bad thing that we need to solve uh, in this video is this takes forever to do anything, right? If I, if I just, um, maybe if, even if I just remove that and, and press enter, I'm not even searching for anything. And this is going to take, I don't know, like a minute. I'm going to cut forwards uh, so you don't have to wait as long as I do. Okay, so it's just finished. That took way too long. So what we want to do, or the reason for that is mainly the retriever model uh, download over here. So every time we rerun or, or change anything in our app, uh, stream the way Streamlit works is it re-executes everything in your script. And that's really good because it makes developing an app super simple. But when you you have something like that, you're downloading an ML model, uh, you don't want to do, redo that every time a tiniest little thing changes in your app. You only want to do it once. Like when the user opens your app the first time, then you download it, and then you don't download it again. That's what you want to happen. And we also want the same to happen with our uh, Pinecone uh, connection. Okay, we just want to initialize that connection once and, and not every time something changes in the app. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to figure that out. So we can go over to the, uh, the Streamlit docs and we can scroll up to the top or go to this menu uh, and we go to advanced features. Now, I know it says advanced, but it's not hard to do this. Okay, so we can optimize performance with ST Catch. Okay, let's have a look at that. So we can scroll down. Uh, it's a caching mechanism that allows your app to stay performant when loading data from the web, large data sets, or, or, do, or performing expensive computations. Now that sounds pretty much like what we want. Okay, so let's go down uh, and we see basic usage. So we have, ah, oh, this is a good example, right? So we have this, uh, this function here. It takes a long time to run every time. Um, and therefore it makes the app very slow. Every, every time anything changes, the whole thing is reloaded. So this uh, expensive computation is rerun every time. We don't want that to happen. Uh, what we want to do is, okay, you can just add this. And that means that the output from that expensive computation is just stored. Okay, it's not, it's not reloaded every single time. Okay, so let's, let's try. I'm not saying it's gonna work. But let's try and do that. So we're going to put uh, define uh, init retriever. Okay. And that is just going to return the retriever model. So return that. And we do the same for our pinecone stuff here as well. So define uh, init pinecone. Okay. And then obviously we need to should we call those so let's let's do that let's do that here okay so we're going to call those um we want the model is equal to init retriever and we want the index is equal to init uh, pinecone okay let's save that let's have a look at our app okay so it's it's running again let's wait a moment Actually, stop that uh, because we <laughs> here we're returning nothing. So we do. We actually want to return the index. That would be that would be useful. 
Um, and now we do, we have to press this, rerun. Okay, now the first time we do this, it's gonna take a while. And first, okay, we want to make sure this is actually, is it working like it was before? Let's see. Are we getting any errors? Okay, no, it always, it always seems to be working fine. Okay, so let's do, let's add that ST cache that we saw in the documentation. Let's add that to both of these. Okay, save, we'll rerun. We'll get this nice little um, spinner running in it retriever. It's not very descriptive for our users, so uh, later on we'll have a look at making that a little more interesting or descriptive. Uh, but for now, we'll stick with that. Um, and this is quite useful because we can see, okay, you know, what are the slow parts uh, of, our, of our model to load? Uh, okay, so we get this, we get this error. Okay, you know, why is that? So when we are um, caching with Streamlit, uh, what it is doing is, well, it basically checks if the, whatever's being cached changes, okay, with every rerun. Uh, so it's uh, putting the function or, or putting some values into your function or rerunning it and having a look at what the, the hash code is that comes out of it. Now, uh, in, in this case, we're, we're calling a, an API. Uh, we don't, or we cannot actually hash um, the, the connection to our Pinecone index, okay? And we shouldn't really do that for our, our retrieval model either. So what we can do is something um, which is kind of new from Streamlit, okay? So whereas ST cache is always going to check the hash code, see if anything is changing. Uh, there are these new experimental um, caches. And one of those in particular is this, uh, we have experimental memo, uh, it's fine. So we use that to store expensive computations. Uh, that's fine, no, 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 we can try that with some things, but that's not what we want. Uh, we want this experimental singleton. So basically what that means, uh, experiment, experimental singleton, is whatever you're running should just be run once and it should not change, right? We're assuming, it's assuming that this will not change, right? So it's not going to check if it's changed and therefore it is not going to create that, um, that hash representation of, of whatever it is you're running. So we can write uh, st experimental singleton Put it here as well. Oops. Let's copy it. Put it here. And okay, we've just saved it. Let's have a look. See what happens. Okay, again, it's going to take a little while to to rerun everything. Um, hopefully not too long. Okay, there we go. So now we have our search. Um, let's say who are the Normans. Okay, I'm not going to skip ahead straight away okay so when there's no waiting anymore which is is really good uh, because before it just took so long so yeah that's that's how we sort of improve the performance of our streamer app using uh, caching and these new experimental caching primitives that uh, streamlet have developed so that's incredibly useful and what i want to look at in the in the next video is uh, okay in uh, over into our app Yes, the performance is there now, but it doesn't look so good. Uh, so maybe we can have a look at actually improving uh, the, this look here. And to do that, we're actually going to not use, well, we are going to use Streamlit, but we're going to pull in uh, what are called bootstrap card components, which are another um, sort of HTML, CSS library. And using the style from them, to display our information. It, it will look a lot nicer than it does now. So that's it for this video. I hope it's been useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.